Hey everybody, welcome back to Champ and Sons in our FIFA 21 Sunderland Manager Career Mode Series. We are going to be getting into it today against Plymouth Argyle will be our first matchup. Um, now I will say we will start advancing through this first season um, fairly quickly. We have dominated this season for the most part. Um, we we do still have some people close behind us chasing us in Portsmouth and Hull City and all that. Uh, but, you know, it's one of those things that these games are working out to where it's it's a little bit too easy, uh, I guess, at this point. We, we have been playing on a world-class difficulty, so we are obviously going to continue that. But, you know, with a season going 40-something games, we are going to start advancing through it uh, fairly rapidly. And it's not going to be Plymouth Argyle. It's going to be Gillingham that we start out with today. And we are going to jump into it here at about the 15-minute mark of the first half as we are going to be working it down the field. We haven't made very many roster changes um, at this point. We do have a couple pending for uh, transfers come over just for the transfer market to get in. And we got the goal on the beautiful cross coming all the way through the field to Gooch as he gets a first goal for us on this one. And that will give us a 1-0 lead in this game. Uh, but we do have a couple transfers coming in. Once they do get here um, into the season, I will point them out, give them their proper due. Uh, but that will be coming later on. They are just waiting for that transfer market to open up. The deals have all been made, sealed, signed, and delivered. So that's kind of where we stand right now, continuing our run as we catch back up here in the first half at about the 29-minute mark. Gillingham is going to start working it down on our defense. We started playing a little foolishly, and they get all the way through, but we get the block, thankfully, for our defenders on that one. But they will get the rebound and head it in. This game is tied. This is starting to look nasty. We should be blowing Gillingham out of the water as they really have not had any you know, production this season at all. And so now we're going to be at about the 40-minute mark here of the first half. We're finally starting to work our way down and play the way we know we can here in Sunderland. Kelly's bringing it down the left side. He gets it into Grigg. Grigg's going to get a pass back to Kelly, who will fire one off past the goalie on the right side, as that was kind of a poor effort, um, and that will lead to a goal kick. He did need to be a little bit better, but Kelly is, once again, a defender. So i going to take that with a grain of salt on that one. Now Gillingham is going to be coming right back down at us, but that's going to be an easy, you know, offense to stop. Uh, as long as we maintain our lanes, they're not going to be anything too difficult for us. Now O'Brien's going to get the pass off to Grigg in the middle, just on the outside of the box. He brings it to the left. He's keeping possession as they work it back towards the middle. Get it over to Scowan at the top of the box. He fires it in right there in extra time of the first half. Scowan giving us a 2-1 to one advantage here. In the 45th minute, coming through with the clutch shot. Beautifully set up by Grigg and O'Brien. Maintaining possession, keeping the pressure on, as that will take us into halftime with a 2-1 to one lead. In all respect, this game should be about 3 to nothing right now. So you got to kind of give props to Gillingham for stepping up and taking us on. You know, head to head, square up, squaring up, throwing the hands, bringing the heat. And so you got, it, it's one of those things. I, I think the second half, we should be able to run away with it. Uh, but I don't want to get too cocky. As we see now, Gillingham was working the ball down, but Scowan is able to take it as he gets it back to Feeney so we can set up our offense. Now, Scowan's going to get the pass to Grigg, who's going to move it to Gooch. Sends it right back to Grigg. He fires it, and that's going to get right past the goalie into the back of the net. Goal for Grigg. Goal for Sunderland. 3-1 lead here against Gillingham. 57 minutes into the 90 of this game as we are starting to get our separation. Starting to play the way we should. And we're going to catch up now in about the 74th minute, 75th minute. And it's going to be Telford who's in the game now as he starts to bring it down and gets it over to Scowan. He passes it to Danny Graham who's replaced Grigg. And O'Brien this time is going to haul it in. And Dobson's going to get it with the header at the last second right past the goalie. Beautiful little touch to get send it right past him. 
four to one lead. Dobson with the finish. And that was just some great ball movement coming there. Dobson got the run as soon as um, O'Brien had it there on the left side. That was just a magnificent, magnificent shot. Uh, coming right off the head. Beautiful touch right between the goalie and that right post. As that is how this game will finish here. Four to one victory. Even though we were tied one to one, it really wasn't all that close. Scowen coming through with a goal as well as I believe he also participated in an assist. Our Sunderland fans, they travel heavy, they travel loud, and they travel proud following us all the way to Gillingham for this one as we will take this easily uh, some uh, but let's let's see match. what the press have to say about us now they, they they're kind of up and down on us it seems like at times ended up being a very comfortable 90 were you surprised oh god this question uh, I don't remember did I give it to defending I'll get I'll give the credit up front uh, four to one lead our defense did kind of falter there at that first half moment allowing them to tie it so forwards you get the praise today four goal win for Sunderland was that a game you always felt in control of uh, you know it, I think it was four to one yeah they did have a tied but it, it's one of those things that it never really came into question so uh, I can't say they put us under too much stress at all in that in that one all right, were you pleased to limit Gillingham's chances today? Ready to stay switched on. We coped well. It was a pleasure watching him play. A kitten day is a player of special quality, but I trust my own guys. Yeah, I, I would take any one of my guys against anyone on another League One team um, in a one on one matchup. I, I just would. You know, I, I don't think that would be Welcome much of a battle. Of and so we are going to jump into the second game of this episode here as we will be back at home in Sunderland, the Stadium of Lead, as we will be taking on Northampton Dune as we'll join this game at about the 16-minute mark as we're going to be pushing the pace on this one as O'Neen coming from the back takes it down the right side and gets the cross. And oh my God, Greg with the shot in the header. Right past the goalie, 1-0 lead for Sunderland. We've struggled at the Stadium of Light in recent matches, but we're going to make sure that does not happen today. Grig, basically with the Sunderland version of a Lambo leap, goes into the stands after getting us the 1-0 lead. Now Oneen, he's going to be working it back down the right side for us. He's been a beast on that end, and they will come in hard on the tackle. They do knock the ball away from us. Um, but still, that, that was kind of beastly. I, I will give him that. Will Grigg here at half has four attempts and one goal to his name. He came in the 18th minute. Uh, that, is a, that is a separating factor right now as we do lead 1-0 here in uh, Sunderland after the first 45 have been played. And, th and this is a game, once again, not in hit. I mean... North Ham we should beat them pretty bad, pretty rough. Um, it should be a epic type of beatdown situation, but you know it's one of those things you never know. And whole city is tied in their game, so if we can, oh my goodness, they steal it from us and they get an easy goal. What piss poor defense that was! Coming off the goal kick, couldn't even get it away. Hoskins he read it and jumped our man and took it from him and finished it like a professional. So Northampton playing rough as we are now and in, coming into the 90th minute and they're gonna try to bring it back on us. We have really faltered in the way we played today, but we will get the ball back from them. And then we turn it right over in our zone. That is not a good sign. They are keeping possession. This is how we've lost games in the past. They're coming in on the, take it down the left side. We will head it out and hopefully Oh, man, they're not going to give us a chance to get that other run. We end up tying this game. Something we, we should have dominated, but, man, we have not been playing well at home. I mean, at least we didn't lose, but still, that, that hurts. Um, so the, the press should probably tear, tear us a new one, but we'll see how it goes. 
Greg picked up a knock today. That means he could be out for the next four weeks. Yeah, um, that is one thing that did hinder us. Greg did get hurt early on in this game. Um, well, early on in the second half, at least. So he is going to be out. I'm not exactly sure for how long. At this point, I don't really remember. But it, it's something that we're going to have to try to deal with and fight through. You know. Two draws against Northampton Dune. Yeah, I really still think we should have beat him bad. I mean, I yeah, we got the one point from the draw, but we this these are this is a team we should beat. There's really not much of an excuse other than poor, poor play for for even for drawing this game. Uh, even into a point where you know we came close to losing that that's unexcusable for facing off against this team. Game was very close, and neither team made. Thank much. you. That's yeah, all the questions it, we have for you. I, man, that that's so disappointing to see. It really, really is. All right, so we will have to advance on through to our next game, which looks like it'll be up against. I don't know if that's Portsmouth or Rochdale. Hyper extended knee will be out for four weeks. Ryan Gig, my man. Oh my God, Will Grigg. Thank you All for right. joining Rochdale, us here today. We'll be taking our some next questions. match up here. Oh, this is going to cause a pressy, a little presser. His game, it must be a blow to lose him. What will you do? Man, one man does not a team mate, okay? We have got an excellent squad. We are, the reason why we are so successful is because we have some depth. Depth that can compete in League One, I will say that. <laughs> I don't think we're ready for the big time yet, but we, we've definitely got enough depth to continue our our run of late. So, squad big enough for the challenge. Yes, we are. We we going to – it is going to take everybody um, to finish this season off quite proper, but we, we've definitely got the team. Last time you had a rush, you know, dramatic, hot-tempered, and great entertainment. What are you expecting from this game? Uh – Man, let's do it again. We'll just keep the focus on winning. Forget who we're playing. Yeah, you know, and that's one of the things. Just focus on doing your job and winning the game. Whether that's you're playing Rochdale, you. whether you're playing Man U, whether you're playing uh, Portsmouth, Plymouth, whatever. It doesn't matter. Just do your job. And we are going to jump into this game early at about the two-and-a-half-minute mark as we have Gooch making a run down the right side as he gets a pass off to Graham in the middle. Graham, what the beautiful shot! Right past the goalie into the net, giving us a 1-0 lead early in this game. And look at all that snow. This is our first snow game of the series. And Graham stepping up big, filling in for Grigg. Coming and getting that shot. And so now, once again, we're at about the 10-minute mark, and we're going to be making another run. Graham getting the pass over to Dobson. Dobson has O'Brien. O'Brien in the box. He finishes it in the upper left-hand corner of the goal in the back of the net. O'Brien with the finisher on that one. Beautiful ball movement. Graham to Dobson to O'Brien. Could not ask for anything better, and our traveling fans are ecstatic. And so we're going to go ahead and jump in down all the way to about the 63rd minute. We did get one extra goal, so we do have a 3-0 lead. Um, but at this point, Rochdale's starting to put on some pressure on us there, giving our defense a little bit of fits, making a run on this one as he will get the ball fired off. And they get it in? You've got to be kidding me. You have got to be kidding me. We ruined our clean sheet on that his poor defense and maneuvering there um it, we do still get the victory though we won three to one we get three points for the victory so i gotta kind of give us give our guys credit for that Some but man that oh god that shouldn't have happened it should be three nil i did turn it off a little bit turn off my jets i'm not gonna lie once we were up three to nothing um so you got to give them credit for following through and taking advantage of that and getting the goal but still, we that should have been a clean sheet for us. Although on the positive, anytime I bring someone in and I pay money and I add that bonus for clean sheets, I really avoid having to pay that bonus by allowing those types of goals. So, 
Not very good for team-wise, but good for business, right? Good for business. Let's see, were you confident about today? We always knew we'd have times where we were pressured and all that stuff. Uh, but yeah, no, we, we fought through them. Great attitude, great concentration by our team, especially the lads up front as they see. So, And that's our second win against Rochdale. I think it's Rochdale. Maybe it's Rockdale. I don't remember how they pronounce it um, in the game, but... Have you got the edge on Russia? Yes, we got the, we beat them twice. And if I'm not mistaken, the previous victory was a, uh, we beat them fairly handily. Thank you, that'll be all. Three one on the second game. Beat down in the first one. We, we've got their number. No worries. I'm not worried about it. So, Hume, I need more games gaffer. Don't you call me gaffer. Uh, oh my God, Hume, I probably just need to get rid of you at some point. If the price is right, I'll get rid of you. You are 66 overall, right? So I'm going to kind of acquiesce to his request and let him feel like he's important. You know what I mean? Um, but eventually, if an opportunity comes, you bet your butt I'm selling him. Ooh, here comes our next game. It's going to be against number two in the league, Portsmouth. They are hot patience, on we'll our heels as well. Uh, this is not something that's going to be an easy game. I really don't believe coming into this is going to be that easy. We are going to have to be in top form if we are going to have any chance of beating them. Uh, uh, this is a game I don't want to end in a draw. I need to win it. You know, just to start adding some of that separation between us and them. So, uh, running in three goals against Portsmouth. What are we expecting this time? I don't know. This is a rough one. Portsmouth's not the same team now they were last time. So, the manager will make changes and have a different plan for us. But, yes, our players are determined. But let's face it, determination doesn't always produce results. We're certainly enjoying that comfortable two-goal win last time. Will the opposition be worrying about you? I'm not going to worry about what the opposition cares about. Our guys are, we're good. We're ready. We're in a good mental mind. We're in a good physical state. Proper form. Okay, proper guys, we're fitness. Thank you very much. For this game is really meant for us in. to, I think this is how we can show we are ready to at least possibly take that next step into the EFL uh, championship. Uh, get that one more, that one step closer to the premiere. So that's, um, and, and winning games like this will kind of help you show that we're, we're ready to take that notch. But Portsmouth coming on strong here at about the four-minute mark. They drive it into the box, and they get it right past Matthews. Oh, my goodness. They're going to start out with a one-to-nothing lead on us. Oh, my goodness. All right, Cannon with the goal in the fifth minute. So Portsmouth leading. Here at Sunderland, one to nil. Now Gooch making a man missed, coming down the right side quick and heavy, but no one's making a run with him. And finally we get a pass off to Graham. He's gonna head that one in. Oh my goodness. A soft little touch crossover to Graham as he made the late run. He was really falling behind us on that one, but he will drive that one home as we are now tied. We have got the equalizer. And look at that, just bloop, off the ground, into the back of the net, bouncing it. The goalie didn't have a chance on that one. That was a beautiful finish. So now at about the 20-minute mark, we're going to end up taking it right back from Portsmouth, Gooch, but he will kind of get it knocked away while maintaining possession. Now Gooch gets it over to Scowen, Scowen to Dobson, Dobson to O'Brien. O'Brien fires it, and the goalie will stop that. Um stop that attempt so now here we are in about the 43rd minute give or take of this first half willis with possession trying to work it down but portsmouth playing pretty heavy in front of us not giving us a whole lot of space to make maneuvers happen but we get the pass off to gooch and he's going to be off sides have got to be kidding me and so portsmouth will have the chance to try to get another run here at the halftime as we go into the extra minutes Portsmouth is going to start working it up the middle. 
as they get to pass a little bit further down to the top of the box. Now Oneen having to step up as they send the cross in and we will head that one out barely. But we're still not able to clear it. And finally we get the pass kind of semi-cleared out but Portsmouth comes right back with it. They work it into the box. No one's putting pressure on and they will fire that one in. In the extra time we give it up because we fail to clear the ball. So we are trailing two to one. Now here in the 58th minute, Portsmouth coming off a corner kick from a missed goal attempt. They will send it in. We'll punch it out. I don't know why we did not catch it because Portsmouth has a possession again. And they will work it across as they get another header into the net as they lead three to one. Oh, my goodness. All right. Time to start getting serious now as we get it to Dobson on the top of the box. Back over to Telford. Telford drives it into the back of the net. We are now down two to three here in the 63rd minute. We are not going away silently. All right, so here in the 87th minute, we're not going to have very many more opportunities to make a whole lot of things happen as O'Brien will get the ball coming down the left side as he's going to start working it back over to the middle. Maintain possession, set something up. Telford will fire it over, but that will lead to nothing. We're now in the 89th minute. We don't have any time left. We have got to get this ball back immediately. Portsmouth is just keeping it from us, just toying it, just toying it with us. you got to be kidding me. Portsmouth is going to come back and beat us in this one. Oh, my God, that's disheartening. That's not good. Maybe we're not as ready as I thought we were. You know, that's the only thing I guess it could be. It's not because Grig is out or anything like that. We just... We just failed in our opportunities. Our defense was lackluster. And Portsmouth pulls off the win here in Sunderland today. That one hurts. Their fans up in the high section, they appreciate their team's effort. But, man, Sunderland, y'all deserve so much better than that performance by our guys. Really, really do. You know, we, we did not have any consistency in our attack. We did not have any consistency in our defense. Uh, just all around. Poor play by our by Sunderland. Uh, Graham and Telford got the two goals in the 8th and 64th minute, respectively. Oh, hi there. I'm just so, we should have... About the match. Man, the press should tear us apart. Hopefully they don't, but... You must surely have been expecting to beat Portsmouth again today. Instead, they surprised you. How do we explain the difference between didn't handle the pressure the lads gave it everything yeah it's really we didn't handle the pressure they put it into us and they kept coming and coming and coming and we really did nothing with it our defense just could not get the ball away ever it seemed like and so we've got to do a lot better we may need to start rethinking our lineup who do we have sitting in what position at this point you know we'll, we'll see how that goes in the next uh later episodes we'll see what happens see if we can't work on uh, you know especially whoever we get coming into us and through the transfer market um, as it opens back up that won't be until I'm gonna say January we are in the winter time but that, you know it's still a little ways before be we get our Thanks new very much. join us so all right, that will do it for today's episode. Remember to hit that subscribe button if you have not already and hit the thumbs up button um, if you did like today's video as it really helps us out and we do greatly appreciate it. So thank you for joining us and we will see y'all next time. So as always, everybody, stay safe and, well, you know how it goes. Later, y'all.